Hello and welcome to another MASH session and today I am genuinely delighted to be joined by Paula Lorimer, Director at Harrogate Convention Centre. How are you Paula? Well I think like all of us have been a lot better and I'm very worried about our industry. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. You know, your 147,000 square foot venue has just been told to prepare itself to once more become an NHS Nightingale hospital, you know, as the UK prepares to deal with the second wave of this COVID-19 pandemic. But Paula, mm -hmm. I thought I'd start by asking you really, what have been the implications on the industry of the lockdown we've had so far, both on the venue and Harrogate, you know, and the wider area? Yeah, it's been very profound, like everywhere else, really. And I think um, I feel that Harrogate's been really disproportionately affected because we're not a big city. We're, we're a beautiful northern town with a big convention centre in it. And uh, uh, yeah, every, every pound that's spent at the convention centre, uh, five pounds is spent in the district of Harrogate. And um, it's incredibly difficult. Um, just this, this week, we've lost one of the most um, well-known and well-respected exhibition contractors in, in, in Joe Manby's, uh, and they're based in Harrogate. And again, it just shows this domino effect of the events industry being shut, what that's meant to the hotels, the bed and breakfasts, the, you know, the restaurants and, and all the businesses uh, around our sector are, are, are really in a, you know, on their knees as we are in our industry. Um, and we need to just keep making that noise and, and we're doing all we can in Harrogate this week on TV and various other things to, to make people know um, in Yorkshire and beyond uh, about the plight of everybody. And this is this is the thing, isn't it? So many people just aren't aware of the actual tangible value that the business events sector brings to any given destination. You know, you'll have your local population who may walk past your venue every day and maybe don't fully appreciate it. But it is all the residual and indirect benefits that come with it, not just the mm -hmm. hotel stays, but the restaurants, the boutique shops, you know, go, even going to a local coffee franchise or something like that. That is all helping to grow and stabilise jobs and the local economy, isn't it? Yeah, and, um, you know, we bring over nearly 170,000 business tourists to, to, to the district and, you know, uh, and over £35 million worth of economic impact, you know, a city would miss that and we're, we're, we're a town. So, so, yeah, it's heartbreaking at the moment to see some of our wonderful businesses there. And, um, you know, while we're very proud of the fight that we're, that, that we're putting up, you know, in partnership with the NHS, we've got to think about the long term, about how we get our industry back on its feet. Yeah, well, well I think we'll come to that in a moment. I was just curious about, you know, what's been the actually impact on, on you and the team and the venue of actually transforming into a into an NHS Nightingale. I mean, it's a great thing that we can do as an industry that we have this asset, mm. this collateral to, to help fight the case. But I mean, what, what has been the impact on you guys? Well, um, obviously we were locked down at the time, so we had to mobilise everything. And the first thing I know is I've got the army on my doorstep. Um, so uh, to have a look around the venue. And I think... Um, you know, we, we were very proud of the achievement that we, we managed to help build it with them in 12 days, like many of the other Nightingales. I think we showed what a proficient and absolutely vital, skilled people that we have in this industry. But, you know, we have 61 people that work at the venue. Um, and most people in Harrogate have got somebody, either their own family that work in or their extended family that work with us or, or are, are some of our casual staff. So for the, for the full-time 61 staff, um, you know, we've now just got a small nucleus of, of staff working about six or seven. Obviously, that might that might increase. But, you know, now we're locked down for a prolonged period of time. Um, we were what we've had to try and do is to save jobs. So what we have done is we've managed to redeploy 75 percent of our staff to Harrogate Borough Council because we also provide six, seven million pounds worth of revenue to council to, to the council of Harrogate and the districts to run services. Um, they're under huge strain at the moment. So um, I've got a number of my team uh, working at the cemeteries, working on the dustbin rounds, working in the nurseries. And, you know, I want to pay tribute to them because they've really grasped the nettle at this terrible time and are doing their bit. So um, I don't want to forget all the people that are out there being redeployed as well as the people, um, you know, inside the venue. But, you know, we've had 129 events cancelled. 
We've had, you know, Christmas and gift and home and gift. Um, you know, 60 years anniversary we missed for home and gift in July. And the 70th anniversary just we've just had for Christmas and gifts. So, you know, we're feeling for our customers and everybody there. But at least we feel we're doing something by being a nightingale. And we're doing all we can to support the NHS at this difficult time. What's your relationship like with your local MP? Have they kind of helped and understood where you're coming from and, you know, what you need? Yeah, um, I mean, and, Andrew Jones is, 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 is very aware of the situation. Um, he's actually asked questions twice in the House um, on our behalf. Um, you know, we're competing with some sort of quite sexy industries, football, um, you know, hospitality, theatres, you know, and I was shocked to see some of, some of the uh, pictures that were seen in the Palladium and various other places where it's seemingly fine for some other industries to, to open up and have tests um, but for our events industry, it's not. And he he has supported. I've had lots of support from the 40 councillors we have in, in, in the town as well. So so we're doing doing what we can. And, and obviously we've asked for packages of recovery packages for our industry and our, de- our destination. And uh, but like everybody else, we're yet to hear anything. So this is this is obviously quite crucial. We're at a stage now where, you know, you know, cases are spiking again. It's perhaps unlikely we're going to be seeing any events running before the end of the year. Uh, certainly large scale events, that is. Therefore, logic suggests that unless the government willingly wants us to go out of business, they have to provide some manner of support package targeted to, to the events industry. What do you think we actually need? Well, first of all, we need recognition of the industry as a defined industry. I think we need we need that, that they understand it's a £90 billion industry and they need to give us some form of recognised status. Um, I think they need to look at the destinations. I mean, you know, um, we're, we're just one, one nightingale. And we believe, you know, we've been there in the government's hour of need and they need to do it for us. So the type of packages that we're talking to the government about at the moment are packages in, in order to... Um, look at subvention, um, which is a, a, a very, very powerful tool to be able to support some of the events to try and get them back on their feet. So that is big, my big push is to the rally cry uh, for subvention, because that subvention will actually then crystallise into more economic impact and getting you know, the country back on its feet. So we need, in my view, recognition of our industry, understanding how crucial we are, we need packages of subvention to support us and the destination. And, you know, we need them to listen to us and actually, you know, give some recognition of the fact that, you know, they might try and save the hospitality industry, but unless our industry is opened, it won't work. So, I mean, what, in your view, should the future post-COVID-19 recovery look like for, for venue and event sector, really, I guess? Because at the moment, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're almost giving our, our key skills and our big events to our international competitors on a plate. That can't be right, surely. No, it's, no, it's not right. And um, I, I, I think a post-COVID recovery, every venue is different. Um, I, can, I can tell you some of the things that we're working on. I mean, we've spoken to our customers at, um, about being able to, uh, if we've got the availability of actually letting them uh, sort of have their events uh, more far flung in the venue. So if we've, if we've got the availability, they'll be allowed to spread out um, free of charge. So we'll be able to give that sort of um, social distancing that we may have for, for a time to come. We're also saying to customers that we can extend the time scales during the day. So um, also free of charge. So we're trying to be able to uh, allow the visitor numbers to be spread over a period of time. And, you know, I've said to our customers, yeah, they've got my commitment that if we've got the door, we will give them free extra open days to try and feed again, to try and it us through. So, you know, we were ready for these packages back in September. Um, and so it's been, you know, really, really frustrating and, and heartbreaking not to be able to start all this off. Um, but we, we believe that um, we, we are a big venue, um, you know, we, relatively. Um, so we can spread out these, these things. We can offer um, our opportunities for some of our clients to uh, help them rebuild their events, because I believe they're going to be losing some exhibitors big time. 
So we need to be able to go back and look at some of those contracts that we've got. And I've got my commitment as well. We'll do what we can to do partial take ups and things like that. Um, uh, and also um, look as whether we can actually then offset that with any subvention that we get to help everybody. Um, and also the other thing, we've got to have contractors to come back to, to build our events. You know, what's going to happen for our contractors and our supply chain? I mean, the AV industry has been decimated. You know, we've got to get these live events back on. So I think I think subvention is a, is a, is a, is a big role. Um, but also, I think, well, thanks to Conference News and, uh, uh, and many other outlets to try and work together to, to, to get us back on, on our feet. But what I do know is, is that um, although I'm talking to you on Zoom today, I'm Zoomed out. And I think there's a great future. Um, there's no substitute from pressing the flesh. Um, yeah, there's no substitute for conferences those um, business deals that are done in the restaurants and in the, in the bars in the evening and that depth of relationship you can only have if you've got somebody in front of you. So um, people have asked me, you know, oh, are they ever going? Yeah, they are going to be back. And I'll tell you what, we've missed them. I've missed them. Our, our organisers have missed them. And I know the visitors have missed them. So I think, you know, pull together, get the government to recognise it and get out there promoting. We're just about to launch a big destination marketing organisation in, in the district. So we're throwing quite a lot of money about, about you know, to, to be able to throw at um, being able to promote our events, our venue, our district, to get as many people back to Harrogate as we can, because, you know, we, we realise what an important role we have to play. Um, so conferences will be back, exhibitions will be back. And um, please, we need to pull together to get the government just to recognise how important we really are. I don't think anyone could have said it better. Paula, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much.